Welcome uh, back to the shop. This is part two of the uh, KV4P testing, uh, building, uh, whatever video. We built uh, in the last part, we built this, uh, this, actually we built this thing, we didn't build the Android phone. The little KV4P radio module that you connect to uh, a uh, Android phone. And uh, today I figured we will uh, try and test, see what it sounds like. And we'll also take a look at the spectrum analyzer. The way we'll do this, is uh, with uh, the uh, IC705. I programmed uh, or uh, I've recorded a message into that one that I will play back. Uh, I'll put this, of course, uh, um, a few uh, rooms away and I'll, I'll transmit at uh, 0 0.1 watts and uh, we'll uh, receive on uh, the KV4P on the Android phone. And for comparison, we'll uh, THD75, the, the latest uh, handheld from uh, Kenwood. This is, of course, not in any way a fair comparison. This is a radio that costs at least 20 times as much. Uh, it's going to show you the one end of the spectrum and it's going to show you the KV4P in comparison to it. And you can make your own uh, decisions as to whether this is uh, something you think is worthwhile or not. I'll also put the uh, 705 in this room and uh, remove myself a couple of rooms away and transmit from both the THD75 and the KV4P radio on the Android phone. So you can listen to uh, what the 705 hears at, uh, at the other end. Um, after that, we'll try and do some, uh, some uh, traces on the um, spectrum analyzer and uh, look at the spectrum. And again, we'll compare it to the THD75 to have uh, some sort of a baseline, high-end baseline. I'm just going to put uh, overlays on the screen so that uh, you can listen uh, instead of having me talking over the actual audio that's trying to, that I'm trying to communicate. Uh, so there's going to be a few clips. Uh, we'll uh, show you uh, overlays of uh, what radio and uh, you can uh, listen. And I'll also put some uh, bookmarks in the, uh, in the description so that you can jump back and forth if you want to re-listen to uh, any particular one clip or jump back and forth to compare uh, the clips to each other. And uh, as I said, afterwards, we'll do the uh, spectrum analysis. If you want to just uh, skip straight to that, there's also, of course, going to be bookmarks down in the uh, video description. So let's go ahead and listen to some, um, some recorded audio. Lima, Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck? If a woodchuck could chuck wood, well, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could. Lima Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing. Lima Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could. This is Lima Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing. This is Lima Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing from the KV4P HT. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could. This is Lima Bravo 5 and Juliet, Juliet, testing the KV4PHT. This is uh, Lima Bravo 5 and Juliet, Juliet, testing from the Kenwood THD75. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Well, if a woodchuck could chuck wood, a woodchuck would chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could. This is Lima Bravo 5, Juliet, Juliet, testing from the Kenwood THD75. Next, we'll uh, take a look at the uh, power output and uh, any spurs uh, or the amount of spurious emissions on the two radios. I'll uh, start now with the, the uh, KV4P and uh, see what kind of a job Mark actually managed to do with the... Uh, low pass filter on uh, on the output. It's going to be pretty exciting. Um, we will do a uh, measurement of uh, harmonics. We have a fundamental of uh, 145 megahertz and we'll do three measurements. Uh, I don't think there's much point in measuring anything beyond that point. So let's start with the KV4P and see what uh, what we measure. We can see here, it's, uh, I'll do a screen overlay, of course, and I'll also convert this into watts and other relevant information. Uh, we will see that uh, we have about 11.6, 11.5, 11 11.6 dBm. Uh, that's uh, um, not accounting for the uh, 20 dB uh, attenuation. 
and uh, we have a first harmonic which is about 60 dB down from uh, the uh, fundamental which is pretty impressive and uh, uh, a third harmonic uh, that is uh, 80, 80 something 81 82 83 dB down from the fundamental still pretty uh, good results there I'll also convert this into watts so that you can see what kind of power output this uh, is actually producing in its current uh, state now let's uh, compare that to the uh, Kenwood THD75 on the same frequency so we're of course expecting a little bit more power output let's have a look and uh, yeah, this is pretty spot on, 17 dBm, and accounting for the uh, 20 dB attenuation, that's uh, pretty damn close to 5 watts output. And we see here that the second harmonic is uh, about 57, 58 decibels down from the uh, carrier, and uh, or the fundamental, and the second harmonic is uh, 6, 75, 76 dB down from the fundamental. Uh, still, I think, um, absolutely within spec and fairly respectable, but actually not as good as the KV4P, which I think is pretty amazing. But then again, this is a dual band radio, and I'm guessing it's uh, easier to make a, a, a low pass output filtering uh, circuit for just the one single band than it is to make it for a, a dual band radio. I'm guessing that's the reason why this is... Uh, the differences here. That uh, concludes the measurements and the tests of the KV4P and the comparison to the uh, slightly overpriced uh, THD75 and uh, at least for uh, power output uh, it did uh, very well and uh, for spurious emissions I think it did very well as well and uh, yeah I'll uh, let you listen to the uh, audio and uh, make up your own mind whether this is uh, worthwhile a radio to have. I think for my part I would rather bring this uh, radio or even uh, a much smaller one like this uh, TID Radio H3 uh, for everyday radio use and I have to say for me I, the way I see myself using this is just putting it in with my luggage so that when I go on uh, any sort of um, trip I'll have something to do VHF with me as long as I have a phone that's uh, that's going to be very very useful uh, to have so that I, don't have to bring an HD. I could put this in a computer bag, I can bring it to work, I can bring it, well, basically anywhere I go. Uh, so for me, that's, that's probably going to be the use case for this uh, KV4P. Um, when I'm going someplace where I know I'm going to need a radio, I'll bring the Kenwood or maybe just a cheap uh, Chinese uh, radio. It's a little bit easier to operate and uh, it's got a lot better battery life. Uh, rounding off, I can also say uh, battery life on uh, this phone. This is an average uh, Android uh, phone. I had this on scanning uh, during an entire workday and it didn't deplete the battery. So it's a, it, at least it's acceptable uh, battery level for, uh, for, uh, for what it is. It's, it's not consuming all that much power. Granted, there was absolutely no traffic on the, uh, the repeaters that I monitored, but it was scanning the repeaters uh, the entire day without depleting the battery of the uh, Android phone. Yep, I think that concludes uh, my testing of the KV4P this far. There might be a follow-up on uh, APRS on it. Uh, I don't know. Let me know if uh, there's any interest in seeing that. I might compare the uh, quality of the uh, APRS uh, receiver in this and other radios. Other than that, if you uh, like this, I would encourage you to do give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see some more uh, content like this, please do subscribe. And if you have some comments of, as to things I did wrong or other tests that I should have run, then uh, please leave a comment. Other than that, until next time, 7-3.